Well, thank you all for being here. Uh, it might be a little long, sorry in advance. But um, I wanted to start off by talking about when we're all children, we all had a different dream of something we aspire to be. Whether it's an astronaut, or something along those lines, I wanted to be a basketball player. But um, quickly I learned that, you know, I ran into a problem chiropractors have, something we call limitations of matter. And being a 5'10 Jewish kid with a vertical jump that can't even fit a piece of paper on, I quickly realized I wasn't going to be a professional basketball player. However, I do get the post-game interview right now. So half of my dream is coming true as we speak. So the first half of my speech, I just wanted to give some thanks to everyone that is here. Um, first and foremost, I'm going to start off with my teammates or my classmates. A big shout out to Faith and Conrad. Um, as you two know, you guys are family. I couldn't have got through this program without you. I told all your loved ones at your wedding, and now everyone else here knows my love for you guys runs deep. Thank you. Uh, now to thank my coaches or my teachers on the didactic side, starting from when we were little and Dr. Lou's micro and taught me what hard work is, Dr. Attaway, Dr. Becker, Dr. Theo, thank you for spending countless hours of your free time answering my emails with information that's not even pertinent to class. Uh, thank you for that. Dr. Goff, thank you. We had a couple lunches that really meant a lot to me for getting the hell on my shoulders. And Dr. Cindy, thank you as well for everything you've done for me. So now that I'm done giving my thanks, I wanted to tell my chiropractic story because that's what we've seen to do in this profession. And I'll try to keep it short. So I was part of the graduating class of 2020. I was at Penn State when COVID hit. So I never got to walk the steps and officially graduate. Um, I had a final round interview with Amazon and a couple other companies, and they all got taken away because no one was hiring. And at that point, I really did some soul searching and thought, what do I want to do with my life? I don't think I'm meant for a desk job. So I shadowed a bunch of different professions. I shadowed a dentist. I didn't want to stare at mouths all day. I shadowed a lawyer. I didn't want to sit behind a desk all day. I shadowed at least six or seven different professions. Then a good family friend of mine, um, his name is Dr. Lieben. He's the chiropractor for the 76ers. And I said, OK, I'll go give this thing a shot. And it was the first person I saw, not only was he smiling throughout the entirety of the day, but his patients in the waiting room were smiling. And that told a lot to me, because how many doctors are people actually excited to go and see? So after that moment, I took a shot. And I applied to Sherman without any prereqs and came in completely blind to this program. It's amazing what slipping admission to $100 can do to get to it. <laughs> That's good. Kind of. <laughs> But um, going from there, um, I also, I'm sorry, I forgot to thank my clinical side. Dr. D, you're like a second father to be here. Thank you. Dr. Hudson, you are so wise, and we're going to come back to you later in this speech, don't worry. So thank you. Um, and Princess Caroline, uh, you guys are the most underappreciated people at this school. You guys are the face of this clinic. As soon as people walk in, you're the representation of what this building is. So thank you both. So back to my story, um, there was countless nights in this program, quarters one through four, where I was up late on the phone with my dad in tears, like what is superior, what is inferior, what is hip flexion, none of this making sense, studied, I finally got through the program. And I share the story with you, not to really brag or boast that I got through it, but rather that if someone with no scientific background can come into this program and pass it, hard work, beats everything. And I now want to go back to Dr. Hudson. He said something to me last quarter that has stuck with me throughout my, from then until now, and I think about it daily. He told us a personal story involving his father about motivation and inspiration, and the difference between the two. And it really stuck with me, because anyone can motivate. If you're in the gym, you can yell at someone, lift more, lift more, work harder. And they might do it, they feel motivated, but they're going to go home, they're not going to change. Now, inspiration, that comes from within. And there's a lot to inspiration. If you are powerful enough to say something to someone or do something, that then they go on their own and change the way they do things, that's very powerful and very difficult to achieve. And the whole reason I spoke today was hopefully my story could inspire one of you to make a change you're looking at. And if I can inspire just one of you, and why I appreciate teaching so much is that it has this branch-like effect. Meaning if you guys, you know, you get us through this program, I go and see 100,000 patients, 
Each one of you have seen 100,000 patients because you saw me and you raised me. So now you multiply that times 200 students and all of you have educated. The branching effect is ginormous. And I've seen this firsthand with my mom who teaches in inner city Philadelphia where these kids barely have the basic necessities, if that. And I've really seen the impact that teaching and proper education can really make on people. So I want to thank you all for being here and hope to inspire at least one of you so you can have that branching change. Thank you. Are we out of time? <laughs> <laughs> Um, I just wanted to say that um, I, I had never been the, the best student, never had the great ability to sit down and pay attention for a long time. So I want to start also by thanking these two. Um, thank you guys so much for helping me get through this program, for taking notes from your laws in the face of marketplace, and uh, making sure I showed up to every test. I couldn't have done without these two um, right here. And um, I also want to thank um, I mean, all my professors, really. I'm very thankful for my professors. Uh, but just how I would really like to thank is Dr. Cindy. Um, you, all that you did, not just for me, but for my mom, for my family. Um, you really went above and beyond, even after you were done being my professor. Um, you were really like family to me here, so thank you so much. And Dr. Fell, you as well. I mean, all your prayers, guys. I, I don't know. You guys went above and beyond being a professor, but being so much more than that, caring about me personally. So thank you so much. Um, and I also want to thank um, the clinic here. I mean, Princess Caroline, you guys really um, were just unbelievable. What Max said, I couldn't reiterate that enough, enough um, that you guys are most underappreciated people here. Um, and just all that you guys do, I mean, sending flowers and everything to my family and stuff, Dr. Duvall too. Um, but just how thankful I am for you guys, Dr. Hudson, Dr. Duvall, I mean, Dr. Sussman too. You guys really became my family here in the clinic and you made the clinic experience so much more relaxed, enjoyable, memorable by just giving me a family here. Um, so thank you so much. Um, and yeah, thank you guys. Um, the guys pretty much summed it up. <laughs> so I'm gonna keep this short, but I'm just thankful for everyone here. You each played a very vital role in this journey. It's been an amazing, difficult, but very amazing three and a half years, um, and I'm very thankful. I found my husband here, I got my degree, and I couldn't be happier. <laughs> okay.